Samantha Irvin has just quit WWE, and there's a lot of conversation surrounding that situation. We'll also check out what's new with the Bloodline, Ricochet, and more. Starting things off with the very shocking news coming from Samantha Irvin. Samantha Irvin recently took to her social media platforms to announce that her time with WWE has come to an end. It was such an abrupt departure, especially for fans. There was no reports at all about Samantha being on her way out, no mini farewell tour or anything like that. The news just dropped on fans' heads out of nowhere, and it left everyone pretty shocked. She thanked every single person in the company for always being there for her, and how she'll take everything she learned from there and apply it to the rest of her career. The news for fans is pretty gut-wrenching because Samantha Irvin was quickly becoming the voice of announcing for WWE and pro wrestling in general. There's been a lot of great announcers in WWE history, but Samantha Irvin was really the first one to add a signature touch to her announcing style and even giving some superstars a fully customized ring announcement, such as her most recent ones with Chelsea Green, Gunther, The Bloodline, and so much more. She was working all the company's major events. She announced every single match on both nights of WrestleMania 40, a clear indication of the company's trust in her. She was that good that they really decided to give her that big responsibility. She was the face and voice of Raw, face of premium live events, and so much more. Even just recently as a few weeks ago, WWE sent Samantha Irvin to the Raiders game to represent the company and promote WrestleMania 41. So all these factors is what makes her sudden departure just so stunning and hard to wrap your mind around. It looks like WWE superstars were feeling the same way. Everyone came to say their goodbyes to Samantha. Logan Paul even flat out said that this was upsetting to him. Chelsea Green said that her WrestleMania dream moment was to have Samantha announce her down to the ring, but that's all gone now. Then late Monday night, reports started to go around that Samantha Irving allegedly quit that same Monday morning and how the company only had a few hours heads up before Raw, just making it sound like she walked out of the company. But Samantha Irvin took to Twitter to shoot down those reports and say that she gave WWE the notice several months in advance. That's the good thing about Samantha Irvin. She's not shy to come after the dirt sheets and reports that aren't true. If a false report is posted up there by one of those sites and platforms, She'll publicly come after them and set everything straight right away. And that's exactly what she did with the rumor that she abruptly quit Monday morning. She said uh, that was a flat out lie. Now, of course, the biggest question that everyone wants to know is why did she leave? How does it go from being her dream job that she's so passionate and ecstatic about all the way to quitting the company and walking away? Well, as of this exact moment, there's no confirmed explanation, just nothing but speculation and assumption. Of course, the easiest guess and assumption to make is that her husband Ricochet and his WWE departure most likely affected her decision with WWE's status. Samantha Irvin says she told WWE she's leaving months ago, and that's exactly when Ricochet left the company. His last time being in the company was back in June, so was that right around the same time that Samantha Irvin had told them that she was leaving? That matches up with the timeline Samantha's given. Maybe she made her decision right after Ricochet left that she had to go too. Everyone knows the life on the road can be extremely difficult, especially for couples. It's different if you're both in the same company and traveling together, then of course there's no issue there. Like Bianca Belair and Montez Ford, for example. They're a married couple that's on the same brand, travel together, so there's no complications. But for Ricochet and Samantha Irvin, they both went from being on the same show and traveling together to now being completely apart, constantly being in different cities from each other, and everyone knows how rough that can be. So that's why everyone's assumption is that the constant separation from each other, with Ricochet now being in AEW, just had to play an even small role in her decision to quit. Ricochet was very active on social media following his wife's departure from WWE. He spent the day going back and forth with the fans, and he made a promise that Samantha Irvin will not be joining AEW at all. That was another popular fan assumption, that Samantha would be joining AEW to keep her same job, but now be on the road with her husband again. But according to Ricochet, he promises that's not going to happen. 
A lot of fans are definitely hurt and shocked by this move. Obviously, nothing lasts forever, but fans thought Samantha Irvin was well on her way of being with the company at least for a few more years, but that's not the case. WWE is replacing Samantha Irvin with the legendary Lillian Garcia. So despite the big blow of losing Samantha, fans do get another legendary ring announcer back in her place. And who knows what the future holds as well. Like even with Lillian Garcia, for example, she left, was handling family business, and then returned so many years later. So maybe we do see WWE and Samantha Irvin reunion deep into the future sometime. As everyone expected, the Intercontinental title is playing a key role in Jey Uso's return to the Bloodline story. Jey was defending his title against Braun Breaker and actually looking like he was closing in on a victory. But that's when Solo Sokoa and the rest of the Bloodline appeared at ringside. The Bloodline's involvement in the match did change as the match progressed. At the very start, Solo Sokoa argued with Jey that they were all there to actually help him win and support him. And as self-centered and selfish as Solo's character is, he did kind of put some actions behind his words. When Braun Breaker was coming around the corner with his signature spear, Solo Sokoa did legitimately push Jay out of harm's way and sacrificed himself to take the spear. So that was a big act there by Solo that does make you wonder if he did come out there with good intentions of helping Jay. And even Tonga Loa wrapped his arms around Jay very warmly and gave him some words of motivation for winning the match, but Jay wasn't having it and knocked him out. That's when the bloodline started to take a hostile turn towards Jay. Jacob Fatu ended up dropping Jay on the commentary table behind the referee's back, and Braun Breaker mopped up Jay to win his title back, marking an end to Jay's first title reign after just 28 days. So the outcome was everything that fans expected it to be. Jay was minding his business on Raw, winning the Intercontinental title, but then he got that visit from Jimmy Uso begging for help, and Jay, being the good-hearted character that he is, he knew he didn't want to help Jimmy and Roman specifically, but he decided to indirectly help them by heading over to SmackDown to just talk with Solo Sokoa. And it's because of that SmackDown conversation and trying to create peace with them that they came over to Raw and cost him his beloved Intercontinental title. So despite Jimmy not being there in that moment of him losing the title, Jay can still blame Jimmy for the loss of this title as well. If Jimmy never visited Raw and Jay never went to SmackDown, Jay would probably still be champion right now. So it's a situation where Jay is still equally upset with both sides of the family at this current moment in time. And it's interesting how Solo was trying to recruit Jay for a while there at the start of their outside interference. That's a good indication that Solo is a bit fearful of Roman and Jimmy getting Jay back and how that could cause him some issues. So his strategy was trying to recruit Jay first himself, but obviously it didn't work out, and it still won't work out going forward after they just costed him the title. But things with the family is now personal again between Jay and the family, and he's now being pulled into this messy situation. If Jay wants revenge on Solo, Jacob, and the rest of the gang, he's only left with one choice, and that's to join Roman and Jimmy again. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.